Hello. <clears throat> I think we are live. Let's wait till everybody comes in a little bit. So today we're going to be talking about government contracting, how to win government contracts. Let's see. Let's make sure that my sound is checking out. Check. Let me look at my phone. Let's see. How is my sound? Is my sound gone? Let's listen. Oh, all right. It's working. All right. Put some chat. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Put something in the chat if you can hear me. Pull a one, a two, and a three to the four. Desmond Acha is here to drop some goals on drop. <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot rap. Okay, so low frame, low quality. Please set the frame. Okay. Can y'all hear me in there? Hope y'all can hear me. I think you can. Come on, put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Hello. All right, I think you guys can hear me. I don't know. All right, well, there you go, Latoya. Thank you. Somebody can hear me. There you go. I'm not talking to myself. All right, guys, how is everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. So first, some housekeeping stuff, right? So I've been, um, over the past few months, been working, 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 you know, winning some contracts, helping other students with some contracts, really also really fine-tuning our program to make sure that, you know, it's, um, it has everything that you need to really help you from A to Z about contracting. So we just finalized that last week. And that's why, you know, we're talking about um, GovCon 2.0. So essentially over the past year and a half, we've worked a lot of different businesses, a lot of different students and helped them win contracts and taught them everything about winning contracts. Essentially, when I first started this journey about, you know, teaching people how to win contracts, um, I was doing pretty well myself. I was with my own contracts, do my own thing. And I realized that, you know, people did not know how to win contracts. So I started creating YouTube videos and it kind of like picked up very fast, ironically. So when that happened, I decided, hey, let me create a course. So I created a course and then um, that course was Gulf County University 1.0. And that's my first time ever creating a course. I didn't know what to expect. I just created a course and people use that course to win a lot of contracts, right? So over the past year and a half, we worked with a lot of different students. And in that year and a half, we've learned exactly what they needed to know as far as federal, state, local contracting. So knowing exactly what they needed to know, you know, and um, knowing that my first program, the first Gulf County University had small gaps in that program, I wanted to essentially create a newer version of the program. So in the past, like five months or so, we've been interviewing people, asking questions, you know, I've paid a lot of money to different consultants. I've pretty much read every single book on government contracting. I've watched every single video. So I've essentially taken all that knowledge, right, and created a 2.0 version of the program. And in 2.0, we've really covered everything as far as government contracting, literally from like how it came about all the way to how you know you can win contracts for your business and we actually show you the step by steps everything from a through z like i promise you this this will be the last investment that you make as far as winning government contracts and that's if you decide to make the investment to join our program right if you really want to learn exactly what you need to do this is the place to be okay and also, um, it also comes with like weekly live coaching where we teach you, you know, we meet on Zoom every single week. And in fact, we had a wonderful call. This Tuesday, we have a call every single Monday. We had a wonderful call last, well, yesterday, right? It was a great call. Went through the four, went through the five steps to use to win contracts. Right now, I really went to screenshots and show you guys everything. And today, I will show you exactly the exact same thing, right? How we can, um, how you can win contracts as well. So. And if in a few minutes from now, I will essentially, you know, go through the process of how to win contracts. If I can figure out how to do a screen share, I will do a screen share and um show you my screen as well. It says the current frame rate is too low. Please set the frame to 15 to 6. Okay, frame rate. Where's the frame rate at? I don't know how to do that. Learn more. Oh. I'm still learning how to do this live stuff, okay? I'm still learning. So excuse me. But um it says frame, okay. How do I edit that? Let's see. Can I change this? Uh, I'm probably doing this wrong. Well, we'll just keep going. Who cares, right? If it drops out, I'm still learning, okay? 
but essentially right um this new program we're gonna be it's, called, it's the price will be doubling right like by extra fifteen hundred dollars you know the next today's is 26 by the first it's gonna be increasing tremendously so you want to actually get in there now so that you know you get the benefit of getting the new information at this old price right because we're gonna because we increased the, the value of the program so it's only fair to increase the price of the program however we might make it fair for you guys so that you guys essentially get in the program for only 97 .997 instead of paying twenty four hundred dollars down the road right so it's your opportunity to do so now let's now that you know you know about the program and everything else right oh yeah by the way if you want to um get in that program just send me a message and then we can um get on a call to discuss you know your business make sure it's a good fit for you and then go from there okay so now what you guys came here to learn right how to win government contracts well it's very simple it really is simple and i say it's simple because like i've done it so many times that it just becomes simple and the same thing with you guys right you guys should also do this over and over and over again so it becomes simple right so the first thing you really want to do is figure out what you want to sell that's literally the first thing. What do you want to sell? Not like, don't go and say, I want to win any kind of contract, right? Everybody says that. What do you want to sell? What's your specialty, right? What are you good at? Like, what do you have experience doing? What What have you been doing at work, right? Like, what have you been doing for the past two, three, four, five years, right? Like, what is your expertise? Once you find your expertise, right, start there because you're going to need to be able to justify why you should win that contract. You just can't go in the marketplace and say, hey, I want to win these types of contracts and just start winning them without no experience. Like, they're going to just, it's not going to work, right? It's just not going to work. Now, could you get lucky and it works? Absolutely, you can, right? But you have to, first of all, start with, you know, what is my offer? What do I want to do? What industry do I want to go into, right? So the first thing is your offer. What do you want to sell to the United States government? I have to know what your offer is, right? You really want to do some market research to make sure that they actually buy what you're selling, right? And not just buy a little bit of it, but you want to make sure to buy it in large quantities enough to where you can actually make some money, right? If you're in an industry where they buy it, yes, but they don't spend billions of dollars in it, there might not be enough money on, like, meat on the bone for you, right? So you want to make sure that the industry that you're entering has enough, you know, money circulating in that industry that... You can take a piece and not really impact the, the that industry. For instance, construction is like a freaking booming industry, right? So, if you're in in the construction space, there's obviously money in there. So enter the construction space, the IT space, same thing. Healthcare, same thing. Administrative, same thing, right? Transportation, same thing. But transportation is tricky. Okay, it is very tricky, and I, I I'm leaving it at that. Transportation is very tricky. Okay, but. You really want to figure out what your offer is and make sure that they are spending a lot of money in that industry so that, you know, you essentially know that if you go in that industry, you're not going to be wasting time trying to find a contract because they naturally spend a lot of money in there. So it's going to be easier to find contracts, right? So once you do your market research and you verify that this industry is a great industry, there's a lot of money being spent in this industry, the second thing to do is to find out who your buyers are. So you know that, you know, they buy X, Y, and Z services, right? Now, X, Y, and Z services, that's what they buy. Who buys X, Y, and Z services? What agencies, right? What sub-agencies? So, for instance, right, if you do the Army, Department of Army, that's the, actually, DOD is the department, right? The agency under DOD is now Department of Army, right? Now, the sub-agency, well, let me say it again. So department DOD, right? Department of Defense. That's the department. The agency that's under the department, right? So that's the, the umbrella is the department. Under the umbrella of Department of Defense, you have Army, Navy, Air Force, right? Now, inside, let's say Army, you want to find the office that inside the Army that actually buys those services because every office under the Army buys different things. So you have Department of Defense, then you have Department of Army, right? Now, Army has different offices across the entire country. You want to find the exact office that buys what you are selling, right? Now, there are offices all across the country, so that's why you do your market research to find the exact office in the area that you want to do business in. When you find that office, right, 
you now want to go find the individuals in that particular office that buy what you're selling and those are your buyers right so when i say find out who your buyers are what i'm saying is literally find out who buys what you're selling right yes i know department of army buys all your services but what office though you want to find the office because in that office now you're going to find five people in that office right the first person you're going to talk to is going to be the small business specialist they're the easiest people to meet, right? They look on your website, right? You will literally find the small business specialist on any single website. They'll take a meeting with you because they get paid to take meetings with you, right? So don't be surprised if you have a meeting with them and then they give you no value. Because on their side, you know, they check the box, I had a meeting, cool, right? Because their job is two-way facing. One way facing saying that, hey, small businesses, come to business with my agency, right? That's the first thing they do. And they get essentially graded their KPIs, the key performance indicators are how many meetings, you know, they can have with industry, right? So they usually tell you, you know, get your certification and do all these different things. That doesn't benefit you. It benefits them because if you get your certification, it says, wow, I did my job. But you get your certification and you don't know how to win contracts. That's the problem, right? You don't want to do that. So now, Go to the small business specialist, but you have to provide value. If you provide tremendous value to that small business specialist, what happens is they will actually introduce you to the next person in line. Remember, there's five people that you need to know, five of them. You start with a small business specialist. If you have a great meeting with them, they will naturally introduce you to the second person in line. If you have a terrible meeting, you're not, you're not like your offer isn't great, you don't know what you're doing, right? You don't present well, you don't ask smart questions, they will know you're not ready, you're not competent, right? So they'll just shrug you off and say, go get your same registration done, right? And you think they're giving you real valuable information, but they're not. If you're competent, they will introduce you to the buyer for their office, right? And that's why it's very important that you do understand your market research first, and you do your research to make sure they buy enough of what you're selling, and you're talking to the right people so that when you introduce yourself, it's a match made in heaven and they can introduce you to the next person, right? Which is the contracting officer. With the meeting with the contracting officer, you want to request a debrief meeting, right? Doing this debrief meeting, actually not a debrief meeting, a capability briefing, right? Capability briefing. Doing this capability briefing, you're gonna demonstrate your value. Hey, we are X, Y, and Z company. We specialize in X, Y, and Z. We've been doing this all throughout the Northeast region. Our past performance suggests that, you know, we can provide something to the table. We, we can bring something to the table, right? This is how we can support you. I've looked at your forecasters. I see these types of opportunities that you guys are posting. I'm seeing this on Sam that I post about your organization. I have strategic partners right here to work with you, right? Now you're speaking your language, right? From there, through building that relationship, because it goes back to the relationship, right? Well, that's the third thing. The first thing is your offer. What do you sell? The second thing is your buyer. You reach out to the small business specialist and introduce you to the contracting officer, right? The contracting officer will then introduce you to the core, which is the contract officer representative, because the contracting officer, they really have to watch what they say because you can take what they say and run with it. So they've, they're they very cautious who they talk to. So they introduce you to the core, the contract officer representative, right? C-O-R. The core is their assistant, right? Their assistants can talk to you and actually give you tangible insight on how you can do business with them. So the core. When you meet the core, right? When you start really get, get really, when you start getting very good, they will then introduce you to the program manager. The program manager is the person that's defining the scope of work that you need to do, right? They are defining the contract. The contracting officer's job is just to buy whatever the, uh, the program manager wants. That's it. The contract officer's job is to spend the government's money. That's it. Now, who determines what they spend it on? The program manager. So you want to work your way up to the program manager and the conversation with the program manager are going to be very like detailed technical conversations, right? So that's why before you make it to the contracting officer, you better have your ish together. You need to have your stuff together because they will literally be like, why are you wasting my time, right? And the reality is most of us starting government contracting, 
we don't have our stuff together. And that's why this program is so powerful because we help you figure out our stuff out. Right, we help you really define your offer in a way that makes sense, right? We help you create your capability statement. We help you do your market research to really find out who your buyers are and where the money is going. Even on top of that, we give you email templates to actually email these individuals and what to say in scripts. When you're talking to them, you can actually speak your language. And on top of that, we teach you the rules of the game, right? We teach you how to build a relationship with the buyer. And the last thing, how to provide value because those are three things that you really need to master if you really want to succeed in the government space, right? If you really want to succeed, you have to first know the rules. That's the first thing, right? You got to know the rules. After you know the rules, right, you need to know who your buyer is, right? And that's just through market research. Who buys what you're selling? You know the rules. Now, who is your buyer? When you know who your buyer is, right, the third thing is you got to provide value. But the reality is most of us don't have a value proposition. We have no idea how to provide value in a way that, you know, makes us win contracts, right? So we essentially settle for being resellers because that's easier, right? Because as a reseller, your value proposition is your lowest price. That's it. It's not rocket science to do government contracts if you're reselling because your only value proposition is, hey, I can get a quote and be the lowest price. That's it, right? But if you really want to build a business, like a long-term business that makes you millions and millions of dollars, you need to really understand what your value proposition is, right? So you have to figure that out, okay? So master those three things. Know the rules, know the buyers, and provide value. The reality is if you know the rules, right, and you know the buyer, right, the value proposition, you can quote unquote finesse that value proposition. So the question is, how do you finesse your value proposition, right? How do you finesse that? Well, let's say I find a construction project and I don't, I don't have the capabilities to do this contract, but I know the rules and I know the buyer. I don't have any value. What can I do? I can simply find a company that has value and collaborate with them. Hey, company. I find this opportunity, I have a relationship, I would love to collaborate with you to help you win this contract. Once you win the contract, hire me as a subcontractor, that's my payment. Sound good? Awesome. They're not going to say no, right? So, you, you know, help them win none because they have the value that you don't have because they're already established. You help them win, right? You put a team in agreement in place so you're protected. You help them win. Once they win, you then become a sub. Right, you become a subcontractor. Now you start building your value as a subcontractor, and on top of that, you learned how to win contracts that way. Right, so master those three things know the rules, know the buyer, and provide value. Then it's rinse and repeat. So, back to the five, the five steps to winning contracts. We know about our offer, right? We know, like, hey, this offer right here, this is our best value proposition. Awesome. Step two. Figure out who is your buyer. Who is the person that's most likely to buy what you're offering, right? Let me use an analogy to explain this. So, with contracting, right? With contracting, you want to essentially figure out, okay, let's say you're in a desert, right? You're in a desert and you are thirsty as hell. You need water, right? Hello, do you create outages? I just went through that. So, Let's say you have, um, you're in the desert, right? You are literally in the desert and you're dying, you're dying of dehydration. You need water, right? And somebody comes to you and says, hey, I have a TV. Do you want to buy a TV right now? You're going to say, no, I need water. I need H2O right now. I don't need a damn TV, right? The reality is some of you guys are reaching out to agencies that need water trying to sell them TVs, Right? But let's say you did your market research, you found an agency that bought what you're selling. You knew the rules, right? You found the buyer. Now you're providing value. You reach out to them and say, hey, company, hey, agency, or hey, hey individual in the desert that's thirsty, do you need ice cold water? What are they going to say? Absolutely. Yes, please. Give me as much as you can, right? Because it's a match made in heaven. You can't prepare. You're giving them exactly what they're looking for, right? You know that they need water and you provide water. Here's water, right? That's how it should be when you reach out to these agencies. Now, when I call agencies, they're like, oh my goodness, Desmond, where have you been? I've been looking for somebody just like you, right? 
So that's awesome. Latoya just I just want my first contract, but now I'm trying to understand something. I thought the government would give us the total amount with the purchase order to pay for the goods and then we pay the merchants. However, the FEMA they are saying they will only pay us once they receive the goods and we invoice them. If this is so, how do we get the suppliers to provide the goods without receiving full payment? Okay, so when it comes to government contracting, they pay you after you deliver your contract, right? So you essentially have to go get funding, right? So what I tell my students is before you even start going for government contracts, you need to establish relationships with the banks, right? If you don't have any money, go find some money, right? So since you already won a contract, if you already have a relationship with a bank, go to your bank and say, hey, bank, listen, over the past year, I've told you that I'm doing government contracts. So now I've won a contract. I now need you to do your part because I told you a year ago I was going to be doing government contracts. And now that I won the contract, you got to step up and, you know, obviously give me some funds, right? If they're hesitant, which they might be your first, at first, right, because you're just in your business, they might want some collateral, right? If you don't want to do like the, like do the collateral route, okay? There's another option. You can use a factoring company. A factoring company, they will buy the invoice from you. So they'll give you money, and then you essentially, you know, buy, deliver the services, and then they will wait for the government to pay you. So if you know about transportation, they use factoring companies all the time. The truck driver drives and delivers the load, the factoring company pays the truck driver, then the company that paid the truck driver waits for the actual money from the company that uses the trucks. You see what I'm saying? So if you're like stuck and you need funds like immediately, go to a factoring company, literally Google factoring companies in your area. They will happily give you money to use. You can also get a um, like a uh, like a charge card, right? You can use a charge card to where they, you pay them back net 30, right? So the government, they'll pay you net 30. You can sometimes request, you know, quicker pay. But if they say no to that, if, if they say no, yeah, if they say no to the um, the quicker pay, then your best bet is to just get a charge card, right? Wait, what am I saying? Okay, so first option, bank, right? Go to the bank, bring the contract with you. Hey, listen, I have this contract with the United States government. They're going to pay me if I deliver this service. I need money. I need a loan right now, right? They'll give you money to do that, okay? Get a loan. Literally, get a loan. The contract is your collateral, right? Because the banks are backed by the government. So get a loan, right? They'll pay you back. Second, Max out all them credit cards. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. I maxed out all my credit cards when I first started, but I got I literally paid the bill 30 days after that. Third thing you can do, use a factoring company. They will take a percentage, but they will give you the money up front to use, right? Just show them the contract. Uh fourth thing, you can use a chargeback card, right? Where essentially like you gotta pay back in that 30 days or the interest rate is crazy. Overall, you have the contract, right? And it's actually by the FEMA, by United States government, right? You can always find money. Absolutely worst case scenario, use a factoring company and they will take care of you. Sound good? Give me a thumbs up if that made sense. All right, while we're waiting for Latoya to give me a thumbs up, let's proceed back to what I was saying, right? So how, how how do we create relationships with the agencies, right? I'm getting to that in a second. Okay, so you essentially know what your offer is, right? You know exactly what agency buys what you're selling. You know, you know what your offer is. You really define what you want to sell to the government. You know that they buy a lot. Second thing is to find the buyers. Your buyer is comes to market research. So do your market research and figure out who your buyers are. Once you know who your buyers are, the third thing to do is not go build a relationship with those buyers, right? To go back to my analogy, the buyer is the person in the desert that needs water. You are the person walking in the desert selling ice cold water. It's a match made in heaven. Now that you you say, hey, I have water, you now build a relationship with them. How much water do you want? How often do you want this water, right? Like, like what else do you need? You start asking them questions. How do you buy your water currently, right? You start asking them smart questions to learn exactly how the agency does business, right? You need to know how to speak their language. 
every agency does business differently okay they all follow the same rules yes but the FAR gives them so much flexibility in what they can do. My internet was acting up. All right, no problem, Toyo. So every agency, right, they all follow the same rules, but they all do it differently. So you need to understand that, you know, just because it's the government, they follow the same rules, but they still do business differently. So learn how each individual agency does business. And you really don't want to focus on, like, more than, like, at most five agencies because, those five agencies, if you did your market research well, they will take care of you and make you a whole lot of money, okay? No need to chase like freaking 15 agencies. You don't waste your time. Focus on five, the top five that buy exactly what you sell. Go to those organizations. Find out the five people that you need to know. Start with a small business specialist. Have a great meeting with them. After that meeting, then get the contracting officer that will introduce you to them. After that, go to the court. The contract officer representative, right? After the core, you now have to go to the program manager. If you're in a very technical field like IT, for instance, you're going to be talking to the program manager or even the end user, right? But to get to the program manager and end user, you got to go to the small business specialist and do a great job with them. They will introduce you to the contract officer. Then from there, the contract officer will say, hey, talk to my core. Then from there, the program manager and so on, right? But you really need to focus on building those relationships because they will lead you to the promised land, right? You, you want to build a, an actual business, not just you want a contract here because you got lucky. Then you can't duplicate that, right? You want to win over and over and over again because you're not best friends with the individuals in that organization. So you, first thing is your offer. Second thing is your buyer. Third thing is your relationship. You have to prioritize your relationship. Now, through those relationships, you will naturally find opportunities that they are posting online. Prime example, all the contracts that we bid, we know who the buyers are because we knew we did our market research and figured out, hey, these agencies right here, they buy these services all the freaking time. So we're going to focus on them. No, I'm talking about federal level right now. So I'm going to focus on them right now. I'm going to focus on them, okay? When I focus on them, they will naturally start posting contracts because the market research said that they buy the services, right? So the buyer, the, the relationship will now lead to contracts being posted. When you find an opportunity that is posted by people that you know already, whether it's an RFI, a source is sought, a solicitation, a combined synopsis, a special notice, right? Respond and put your two cents into it, right? They will start seeing your name over and over again. They will see your bidding on contracts that you're posting. You'll keep following up with them, building your relationships. You're going to be learning more about the opportunities that they have in your organization. You can reach out to ask them. Out, you can reach out. Got okay, got it. Awesome. Talk to you Friday. Um, you can reach out to them and start, you know, building that relationship because they're gonna keep posting opportunities, right? They're gonna see you over and over and over again. As they see you over and over and over again, you're learning how they do business. In the process of learning how they do business. Guess what happens? You're building a relationship. You're bidding on contracts. They know who you are, and guess what? You're bound to win a contract. Then the last thing that you need to do, right? If you need additional value, you need additional value proposition, leverage a teaming agreement. So if you find a contract and it's set aside for women-owned businesses and you're not a women-owned business, find a business and say, hey, I found an opportunity. Let's collaborate on this contract. I have the resources. You have the certification. Let's work together. Nobody's going to say no to that, right? Now you work together, now the government is getting two for one. That's a sweet deal for them, especially if you guys are both competent, right? The only way you can scale in the government market, that's the only way you can scale, is by leveraging team and agreements. And that's literally how I was able to win a lot of government contracts in a short period of time, was because I put my pride aside, I said, hey, I don't care if I win the damn contract. As long as I'm making money, I'm cool. So what will I do? I started helping other businesses win contracts and they would hire me as a subcontractor. I was leveraging team agreements. I said, hey, you got the resources. I got capabilities. Let's work together. The process of doing that, I'm building my team, building my repertoire, right? Getting better and better. And just in a short period of time, we're making a whole lot of money, 
right? So those are the five things you really got to do. Then it's rest and repeat. Excuse me. The first thing is you want to essentially figure out what your offer is. Right? What do you want to sell? Is there enough opportunity in the marketplace to make you very wealthy? If there are, awesome. Next thing, find five agencies that buy that exact product or service and get to know the five people in each of those agencies. If you find five agencies and you know all five people, that's 25 people that you need to be best friends with. Just focus on those 25. That's all you need to do. Find those 25 people and make them your best friend. So you found the buyer. The third thing, build a relationship. Make those people your best friend, right? Because those people are going to be posting contracts for you to bid on, right? And if you did your market research correctly, they will know who you are because you reach out to them already. You build a relationship. You're bidding on things that they're posting. They know who you are. They keep seeing your face over and over and over again. You're asking for meetings. You're requesting debrief meetings. You're bidding on contracts, giving them information. You're following up. They're going to get tired of you to the point of, okay, my goodness, this person is not going to give up. Let's reward them something, right? Then they will start finding ways to give you a contract based on your capabilities, right? Man, yeah, it's a whole lot of golden nuggets. I hope you are taking it in because it's like, man, then after that relationship, then you start building on the contracts that they post, right? They see your face over and over again. Then when you finally need help with a contract, you find a great contract that you can do, but you don't have the resources, the capabilities, find a teaming partner and present them the contract. You will call them up and say, hey, company, I have this opportunity right here. I know who the buyer is. They're very interested in doing business with me. However, I need additional support to really fulfill this contract so that we win. I want to partner with you. In fact, I'm giving you the opportunity to make a whole lot of money with me because one way or another, it's either going to be you or somebody else. I'd rather be it you, right? They're going to say, okay, let's go. Now, you now bid the contract together. They, they leverage your resources and your capabilities and your relationship, and you leverage whatever they're bringing to the table. But if you're going to partner with other businesses, right, make sure they're adding value and make sure they're providing something that you can do yourself, right? Then from there, it's just rent and repeat. Now, rent and repeat. Go back to the agency, build a relationship, find opportunities, bid the contracts. You don't have the resources, find a teaming partner, rent and repeat, rent and repeat. That's literally government contracting, right? That's literally it. So all you really have to do on the front end, right, is the first three things. Understand the marketplace to figure out what your offer is. Once you understand the marketplace and what the offer is, right, find the buyers. So do your market research and understand who is buying these particular products and services. You can even take it a step further and figure out who are the companies that are winning the contracts that you want to win and then go look up those companies in USA spending and figure out because in USA spending it will tell you exactly where they are winning these contracts if you guys are the same exact company and they are winning and you're not winning well go where they're going right so you can literally know what your offer is find out who your buyer if you can't figure out who your buyer is then do some more research and figure out who are the companies winning the contracts that you want to win and then figure out who their buyer is, who they're selling to, right? Now you know who they're selling to, then go build your relationship with them. With the building relationship, your relationships will now start posting contracts over and over and over and over again. If you do those three things, right? Everything forward from that point is now follow up with my relationship and bid whatever they post. Follow up my relationship, bid what they post. If they post something that you cannot do, but you have to keep it, well, if they post something that is a little bit out of scope, that's fine. Find a partner, bring them into the deal, and bid the contract. That way, now they see that you're being resourceful. You can find other teaming partners. But that's it. It's now just find opportunities, bid. Find opportunities, bid. But you're not finding opportunities randomly anywhere on SAM.gov. You're finding opportunities where your buyer is posting opportunities. You see what I'm saying? And that's why if you simply follow this five-step process right here, you will succeed. And all of this is not work is if you don't work, okay? If your offer is terrible, if your step one is terrible, trust me, you will not win anything because your offer is terrible, right? So the only way this is not work is if you don't work or if your offer is terrible. And ironically, the offer is the first step. And most of you guys that are in this government contracting space, you haven't really defined your offer yet.
And that's the problem. That's your biggest issue. It's not your inability to find contracts. It's the fact that you haven't really defined your offer. You haven't defined your value proposition. You need to figure out what your value proposition is. You really have to figure out what your value proposition is. If you don't know your value proposition, who's going to buy from you? Nobody, right? Because you're constantly chasing sh uh, the shiny object syndrome, right? You're constantly trying to find, figure out, okay, where do I go for this? Where do I go for this? Like literally, you have to figure out what your value proposition is, okay? Let's wrap this all up, right? Three things that you must know to win contracts. The three things that you must know. You must know the rules. You got to follow the rules. That's the first thing. You got to know the rules. Once you know the rules, you find your buyers, right? Whoever buys your product and services, know who they are. If you know these two, you know the rules and you know the buyers, your buyer will actually find ways to do business with you because you know the damn rules. And most businesses don't know the rules, right? So if you know the rules and you know your buyer, they will find a way to make it happen right they'll find a way to literally get your value because you know the rules and you know who, who they are now the third thing is your value proposition now that you know the rules and you know who you buyer what's your value proposition if you don't have a value proposition go find a company and help them now let me go take a little step further there's three ways to make money with contracting right three ways contractor as a contractor, your value proposition is what you currently do. If you're in IT, your value proposition is the IT solution that you provide. If you're in construction, is the service that you provide. Whatever your business in, right, your value proposition is what you provide, right? So as a contractor, your value proposition is what you provide. The second way to make money is as a consultant. As a consultant, you help other businesses win contracts. Right now, I'm essentially consulting you. I'm helping you win contracts. As long as you implement what I tell you to do, you're going to win, right? So my value proposition as a consultant is my knowledge, right? So if I know the rules, I know who the buyers are, and I have the right knowledge, I can teach any business how to win contracts. So at a bare minimum, every single body watching this video right now, if you're serious about winning contracts, you can be a consultant as long as you learn how to win contracts because there are a lot of businesses that don't know how to win contracts. So if you simply just enroll in my program to learn how to win contracts, then take that knowledge and teach other businesses as a consultant, you make a whole lot of money. Because that's what I did to really get my past performance up. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I won a few contracts and I realized I didn't want to keep winning, you know, 10,000 a year, 20,000 a year, 30,000 a year. I want to win a million dollar contract. I want to win $100,000, yeah, $100,000 contract, right? I thought I said $100 million, but $100,000 contract. I want to win big contracts. So what I do, I found capable companies that had the resources, the capabilities, but did not know the buyer and the rules. They had the value. I had the rule book and I knew who the buyer was. Match made in heaven, right? Let me, and I'll help them win. They won. They pay me commission. That's it. Then we rest and repeat that. You can scale that to having 100 clients, right? So you can be a consultant, and your value proposition is your knowledge. Anybody can be a consultant as long as you learn the right things to do. I can teach you all of that. And the last way to make money with government contracting is to be a reseller. As a reseller, your value proposition is your price. That's it, right? Like, that's it. Like, it's, it's literally your ability to find a product at the lowest price. That's your value proposition. The question is, can you build a business being the lowest price? Probably not. Because there's always not a lowest price coming down the street. Right? So, if you know the rules, you know the buyer, you now provide value. How can you provide value? Is your value proposition exactly what you currently do? The services that you provide? Is your value proposition... Your knowledge that you can help somebody else do something. It should via proposition your ability to source products at a low price. Right? What's your value proposition? Once you know your value proposition, follow the rules, find a buyer, have a great relationship, and start bidding contracts. Then you rest and repeat. You know what I mean? That's government contracting. It's not rocket science. It's really not. You know, it's, it's literally really not. You know? So, this making sense. Drop some bombs in the chat. It's making sense. Like, put like something, like, I don't know, put a one in the chat. Like, say something in the chat. Let me see if it's making sense. 
Hopefully I can like save this video, upload on YouTube. Mm -hmm. This is good. Okay, well I guess nobody. All right, but uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. It's just not rest and repeat, okay? So, um, last thing I'm gonna say is, you know, like like I said, the end of the at the end of the month, at the end of the month, awesome, appreciate that, Kim. At the end of the month, right? The price of the program is gonna literally double by fifteen hundred dollars, literally. So I'm letting you guys know right now, get in here before the prices go up, because like the amount of value that we give in this program is freaking like nobody else's programs comes close. Go on the website, listen to some of the testimonies. They all tell you the same thing. They've been in everybody's program. They've been in, the, I don't want to say any names, but they've been in all the Guru's programs. And they say, like Desmond, like this program is literally like revolutionary. Like nobody else's program even comes close to what we have to offer. And on top of that, we meet every single Monday on Zoom to coach you and really help you answer your questions. It comes included. At the end of the month, you will have to pay for those weekly coaching calls. Right, like a monthly fee or something like that, right? But for now, you can literally get in at like the price nine nine ninety seven, literally nine ninety seven. At the end of the month, it's gonna increase. So I'm letting y'all know right now, this is your opportunity to get in there, okay? Like I've been busy for the past few months, like within my own contracts, you know, fine tuning this program, just working with other businesses. So I haven't had time to really come to the Facebook group, but. I plan on really, you know, being active again, you know, posting YouTube videos, being in the groups, right, sharing more knowledge and really trying to help you guys win your own contracts. But if you really want to get the secret sauces, you know, like the actual like one on one training, coaching, stuff like that, right, you have to be in the program. I can't like, like being on the Facebook group, you know, like it's not a priority for me. You know what I mean? Look at that. Kim said the, pro the, the program is lit, right? Like being the Facebook group and stuff like that, like all the free content, like that's not that's that's it's good to me to do, right? It gives me sharp, it gives me helping give me value, right? But like I got so much stuff going on that like for me to just like sit here every single day and create videos, you know, for free and stuff like that, like I got a lot of things to do, man. You know what I mean? So if you really want to us to support you, we'll guide you, hold your hand and walk you there. And I promise you this, this will be by far the last investment that you make as far as winning government contracts. This will literally be the last investment that you make as far as winning government contracts because we show you everything. I've done all the hard work for you. I've freaking been through all the SB meetings, gone to the pizza, the, st the small business, oh, the small disadvantaged business center, right? I've done all of that, right? I've watched every single video on YouTube. I've freaking bought everybody's programs. I'm telling you right now, I've read every single book. I've interviewed freaking people that are making millions of dollars in the government market. And I'm telling you right now, I've even spoken to contract officers. I've had contract officers go to my program. They're like, wow. Even Ali knows some of this stuff. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I'm telling you guys right now, okay? For the amount of value that we provide, like, like literally, like, you're, you're, the, only person, you're, you're the only person standing in your way. Like, nobody's standing in your way. At the end of the day, you're either going to go on YouTube, and watch YouTube videos, or join some other program and realize that, dang, it wasn't really that good. Or you're going to come in here and you're going to be like, you know what? I made the right choice. Because like I said, for the next 10, 50 years, I'm going to be doing this right here. I'm only 26, remember? 26 okay like i didn't get you by accident you know what i mean put in work i put a lot of work in you know and that's why i, I feel so passionate about doing this because it's not about me anymore because i was doing fine until i started creating youtube videos and realized that y'all didn't know what the hell y'all were doing <laughs> you know and ironically like i guess it just worked out because i actually love doing this right here so I'm here to support you guys if you have any questions you know send me a, actually send me a message but more importantly Go to the website and just book a call. Either me or my team will get on the call with you and we'll essentially figure out how we can support you, create a custom-made solution for you and your business. And then, you know, if it's a good fit, we'll support you and enroll you in the program. And if you guys don't know, we have two programs, right? Our first program, that's just our digital course where we teach you everything from A through Z. And you get those weekly live coachings, right? Right now, the weekly live coaches is essentially included in the purchase. After November 1st, you would have to pay for the weekly coaching. It would be like, like $67 a month for that one, right? Our second program is a 16-week, very intensive program. We meet four days a week. It's two hours a call, right? So eight hours a week, we get on a Zoom call and we work on your business for 16 weeks. For those of you that are already like well-established, you know, you don't have time to sit there and figure it out on your own. You want to invest to actually get the hands-on stuff, right? The hands-on training with you. Like I said, we meet every day for 16 weeks, four days a week, right? Monday through Thursday, two hours a day. 
and get this thing rolling. Finding contracts, market research, bidding contracts, writing proposals, everything from A through Z we do on this calls. You can also, you know, book a call and just we'll talk about that, okay? Nonetheless, guys, I'm here to really support you. Look at that. This uh, EC said, most genuine person I know. Because I really am. Like, like, bro, if you can't tell by now that, you know, I'm really genuinely, like, trying to help, you know, then you must be on the rock or something, okay? But, like, honestly speaking, though, like, I really love what I do. And it's not about me anymore. It's about our community. We need to know this information. The government is literally spending billions and billions of dollars right now. And we're not getting a piece of it because we don't know how to do it. And we get scammed by these companies that are calling us every day, freaking scamming us, taking our money, doing these SAM registrations for free, like, no, like charging us for SAM registrations, you know, selling you hope. By the way, all those emails that you get in your email saying, this contract is for you. You, you can do this contract right here. They, like, they send you opportunities, right? They are literally selling you hope. Because think about it. They're saying, hey, bid on this contract, but they don't show you how to do it. So you pay for the subscription, you get all these opportunities, you look at them like, dang, how do I even submit a bid? I don't freaking know, right? I promise you, make the investment. This will be the last investment that you ever make. And for the cost, literally, like, it's a freaking no-brainer. Okay, guys? So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this live, and hopefully it uploads, right? And, um, yeah, so I'll try to do this more often, okay? But in the meantime, if you have any questions, put them in the Facebook group, and I'll try to answer as much as I can. Like I said, I'm trying to be more active in this. I just got a whole lot going on. I just moved to a whole new state. Like, a lot of, lot of stuff going on in my world, okay? A lot of stuff going on in my world. So, we've been here for 46 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and end the live. Hope this was valuable for you guys, and I look forward to you guys being in the damn program. Make the investment. You got four days left. I think it's four days, five days. You got five days left, okay? So, go ahead, make that investment, and we're going to help you, okay? We're going to take care of you, okay? We will. All right, guys. Peace. Matter of fact, how about this? I'll throw in the money back guarantee. Ooh, you know why I did that? I believe in my product. I know that I can definitely support you. And I know that you'll be freaking satisfied. Like you would, I would literally over deliver. Okay. So if you are serious about taking your business to the next level, I would throw a money back guarantee. But there are conditions. Right. Let's put the conditions in there now. You must go through the entire program. Right, you can't just watch one module and say, oh, "Okay, I don't, get, I'm quit." No, you must finish the entire program, right? And you must join the coaching calls and ask questions, okay? And you must at least submit one bid. If you don't submit a bid, that means you didn't do the work, right? If you don't join the coaching calls, that means you're not asking questions when you're lost. If you're not finishing the information, that means that you're not, you're not educated, you're not competent, right? So, money back if you're serious. I'll do a money back guarantee for you, and that means that you get to finish the program, do uh, join the coaching calls, ask questions, and submit the first bid. If you do all of that and you're not satisfied, right, in 30 days, I don't want to say for the next freaking five years, right? You have 30 days to do all of that, right? If you're not satisfied or think you didn't learn anything, right? If you literally got zero value from the program after going through everything, you will get your money back. But chances are, you will get some value and you'll be like, wow, I should have made this decision a whole lot sooner. So I'm letting you know right now, you got four days left. Okay, guys? All right, I'm out. Peace.